protein available, up to about 25%. The dairy products and the grains give only about 15% of available protein. But there are other factors which we must watch. In the flesh proteins and the dairy products, the composition of the protein is the same, the chemical composition is the same. But you know and I know there's a difference there. I had that pointed out in a wonderful illustration during wartime. We used a remedy made up of gum camphor and other things. During the war, Java was cut off and we were unable to obtain gum camphor. So DuPont made it synthetically, same chemical composition as natural gum camphor. But when you used it, instead of it having, having a soothing action, it was an esclerotic. Why? Same chemical composition, because my druggist wrote to DuPont. They said it's absolutely the same chemical composition. There was something different in the rate of vibration of that. That's the point. So in protein, although the chemical composition of fresh protein and dairy product is the same, there is a great difference. Just like you go into one house, there'll be a certain vibration. You go into another, and there'll be another vibration. So, due to the highly developed nervous system of the animals that are killed and the hate developed at that time, the vibration is different in the protein of flesh food than dairy products. There is no such undesirable vibration in dairy products. So that's an important thing to remember. That there is something else enters into it. Besides just the chemical composition of protein. There's that vibration which is not good for us. Another important point about proteins is this. That dairy products, 90% is available for use in the body. In flesh foods, only 70%. And in grains, only about 65%. So what happens? In the flesh foods we ingest it, it's irritating because only 70% can be broken down. The rest floats around in the bloodstream as toxin. And that is very undesirable. Even though the protein in the grains, only a certain percent, 65%, is usable, the rest floats around, but it's not so undesirable because the vibration is different. That's an important point to remember. And I have found out lately that Dr. Gruner of McGill University has made tests, blood tests, for those who had malignancy. And he found that pork products gave a positive reaction, just as in malignancy. So it, the things point that it is not conclusive, but it points to the fact that flesh foods are not desirable because of that particular vibration that is there. And they cannot be completely broken down, only 70%. The rest floats around in the bloodstream and causes the trouble. So gravity settles throughout our body, causing trouble. Now one other thing that comes to my mind is this. Dr. Kempner proved that. He proved that if he took his patients completely off flesh foods and fed them on rice, a rice diet, 90% of the protein is usable by the body, 90%. He found that the organs such as the kidneys regenerated and came back to normal. Imagine that. Because they gave the body a chance by stopping the ingestion of these proteins which cannot be broken down and float around, causing us all sorts of trouble. So let us remember those one or two things about protein. Protein is very necessary. Very necessary as you get along a little bit to repair tissue. Nothing else will do it. So it's necessary to have protein. Therefore, a vegetarian diet, augmented by dairy products, plus as milk, eggs, cheese, and so forth, is the best. Buttermilk is one of the best. Goat's milk is one of the best proteins. And cheese. And these things must be taken into consideration.
Dr. Das was here, who is a colleague of the two gentlemen with us this morning, several years ago, and he conducted a test on the members of the colony, I remember in Encinitas, who lived on this vegetarian diet, augmented by dairy products, and he found that their blood content was right. Hemoglobin was right. Everything was up to par. So that's a wonderful thing to realize that you can be a vegetarian if you watch the protein content and do not overlook that. Green vegetables, of course, are very easy on the system. Very easy on the system. The grains are easy on the system. And so if we watch that, have fresh vegetables and fruits and live on that diet and milk plus good, clean, pure water, that by all means is the best diet for us. We need plenty of fluids because the body, as you know, is 75% to 90% water. And we need plenty of fluids to dilute the gastric juices, the different juices of the body. And fruit juices, of course, are wonderful for their mineral salt. I'm just quickly going over these things that you may get just the highlights of this subject. One other thing, the vitamins. Due to the artificiality of the age in which we live and all these enriched things and bread and so forth, they supply the vitamins, but there's something left out. We must.